Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, we pray, O Lord, that we may be constantly drawn away from unruly desires and obey by your own gift the heavenly teaching you give us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan find com finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree, because of me you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, and them the just walk, but simmer, sinners stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieved his shoulder of the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. Unseen I answered you in thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people and I will admonish you. O Israel, will you not hear me? I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship an alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. If only my people would hear me, and Israel would walk in my ways, mm -hmm. I would feed them with the best of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would fill them. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. I quote that Gospel a lot uh, because I think it's a perfect examination of conscience. When, when people are just learning to confess, when they're, they're sort of growing into that sacrament in the faith, uh, I think it's often worthwhile to break things down into three and then go out from there. And we could do that with the Ten Commandments, the first three commandments about our relationship with God, the last six commandments about our relationship with other people, and even in our head, you know, with things, with all, with all sorts of matter of matter and even thoughts. And then the fourth commandment is sort of a bridge, that commandment between children and parents, and parents and children, conversely, and how that commandment serves really in a way as a bridge, the first icons of God and the first ones to instruct their children, we hope, in the ways of faith, are the parents. So they sort of bridge that. So you can break it into three that way. You can also look at this great teaching from the Lord, that the greatest commandment of the law, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, all based on the, the Shema, that great prayer that Jesus would have prayed every day, but then the second is like it, not equal, like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we're given only three people in the world we have to love. God, our neighbor, which it seems is most of the time everyone in Christ's teaching. Uh, even though we have enemies, we're told to love our enemies, right? So we love our neighbors as ourselves. So we also hear there ought to be a proper love of self. We, we don't often encounter people as neighbors. We encounter people as another car and we're in our car and we bump up against each other and we, we don't really think of the person that's there um, in stores. That happens a lot probably these days. Uh, I'm guilty of this. Everyone is. In community life, we can see it. In family life, you know, we can lose sight of who people are and reduce them to their roles or attributes or skills or failings or weaknesses or strengths, whatever they are. But the Lord calls us the love our, the Lord our God. Yes, we love him for what he's done for us, but we hope to grow ourselves in such a way that we actually love him because he is God. That we love each of our neighbors as we ought to love each of our neighbors. We love ourselves as we ought to love ourselves. And in that ought, that's, that's where it gets tough but we keep just persevering. And we even maybe ask the Lord, Lord, teach me to love so-and-so as I ought. Teach me to love my teacher as I ought, my student as I ought, my brother, my sister, whoever it is. But we have a lot of time this Lent to be working on all these Lenten things, to be working on purifying our hearts, giving the Lord a simple heart, not making our hearts so complex that, that grace seems not to, uh, Grace, of course, can permeate, but that we aren't resisting that grace. So we want to open up our hearts and simplify them. Perhaps this is one of those examinations we can use to examine our life and then simplify it. Do I love the Lord my God? Do I love my neighbor? Do I love myself? And do I do each of those three as I ought, not confusing one with the other? Trusting in the mercy and providence of God, we place before him our needs and intentions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Pope Emeritus, Benedict, Bishop Richard, Cardinal Regali, and all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those elected or appointed to public office, that they might work together for the common good, particularly in this time of trial. For them we pray to the Lord. We pray for medical workers, for sanitation workers, for janitors, for nurses, volunteers, for everyone, for caregivers who in any way assists those who are suffering or isolated, whether because they're ill or because they're being safeguarded from illness. For all these people, we pray to the Lord. 
for all of those who are ill from coronavirus, from any illness, from any injury, from any calamity. We pray for all of those who are in nursing homes, for the elderly, the isolated, the alone. For them we pray to the Lord. For prisoners, soldiers, for first responders, for the homeless, we pray to the Lord. For countless holy vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and the diaconate, for faithful bishops and marriages, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of the deceased of the Bailey family, and for all of our beloved dead, may all of the faithful departed be brought to a place of refreshment, light, and peace. We pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions of the people of St. John Newman Parish and School, we pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, grant that what we ask for in faith we may in fact receive through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may be pleasing in your sight and always be salutary for us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John Newman, our heavenly patrons, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your strength be at work in us, O Lord, pervading our minds and bodies, that we have what we have received by participating in this sacrament may bring us the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.